I had this interesting problem the other day when using define props in Vue 3 with the composition API and TypeScript. And I wanted to walk through with you guys on it and show you kind of what I think is a better way to do props using Vue. I went ahead and created a quick sample app to show this problem to you guys. Essentially, it's a Hello World app. I have a big button that says Hello World. World. If I look at it, I have this thing called the core button. And inside the core button, I just have some Tailwind classes and just says Hello World. So I thought first I would kind of give you a quick uh, refresher on how props work in case you guys have forgotten. For one thing, you can actually add props onto a button at any time. If you do, it actually, the component will inherit those props and so you don't even need to define them. So in this example, let's say I just wanted to change this class name and change one of these backgrounds to something else. I can simply just put in class and then put background yellow, I don't know, 300. And you can see it automatically changes. And this is a part of how Vue inherits the classes and it actually merges them into the existing classes here. And this is really nice. You don't need to use any Tailwind merge. It just automatically works for you. If for example, let's say you have multiple root elements. Let's say I added a div, div here that says hi. Well, then you can see it doesn't work. And if you look here, you get a big warning that says that extraneous non-prop attributes class were passed in component, but could not be automatically inherited because the component renders fragments. To get past that, uh, a real quick trick, if you haven't, if you don't know this, you can do V bind here and do dollar sign adders. And then there it goes. So you can actually bind the attributes directly onto any element. If let's say you have multiple root element nodes on there. There's also something called use adders if you're using Nuxt here, which allows us, or view, which allows us to grab the attributes from it. But let's say we actually wanted to pass in a prop into this button. So something probably pretty common in a button is maybe we want to pass in the text for this button. So I'm going to add in some double curly brackets and add in a prop called text. And to add this prop in, I'm gonna use define props. And there's a couple of ways to use these defined props. And now we're using the composition API. And if you've come from the options API, this will probably look familiar, but I see a lot of people do using defined props this way. So you kind of do define props here, and then you make an object. And then this object allows you to add in the prop name, in this case called text. And then you can put in like what type it is. Let's say it's type string. Now you can see here that we actually haven't added in these, this text prop here, and it just doesn't look right. So one thing you can do in this define props is instead of defining it just as the type, you can add some more things to it. And this is what makes it very interesting. In this text prop, now I can add in default, I can add in required, I can add in a type and a validator. So type, I could say, hey, it's type string. I can also have some default text if I wanted to. But let's say we want to make this required true. If I do require true, then I get this big view warning that I didn't pass anything in for this missing attribute text. And then my VS code, which I'm using the view language services in as an extension, will give me an error that I haven't submitted the actual text in here. So in that case, I can just put text in, hi, and then it works as you expect it. And one really nice thing about this is if you want to, you can actually add in a validator. If you look here, we have this validator. This validator here well, takes in a value and then you can do something with it. So let's say we want to return if val.length is greater than three. And then what I do here is I do type string as well. So this says, okay, it's a value. If it's long, it has to be greater than length three. And if I do this, you can see right away in my console, if I bring this over, I'm getting a big error that invalid prop custom validator check failed for prop text. And it's a warning. So this works okay. Now you actually don't see any errors in VS code. If I put in the correct amount of, I don't know, length, I no longer see the warning. VS code still stays the same. Now the question I was having and some other people have asked is there's a different way to use define props. So this works fine, but what if you need to if you like TypeScript and you want to have it be a more TypeScript-y way of doing it. So there is a different way to do define props. And the way you do it is you do define props and then you define inside here, this angle brackets, what the types are. So in this case, I could be like text type string. And then if I refresh the page here, this is a valid 
TypeScript type here, this type text, it's also required. So if I delete it from here, you see right away my core button it gives me this error that it's not there. If I try to make it, I don't know, a number, let's say I put in nine here, I also get an error in my VS Code that I passed in a number and it requires a string. This all works as expected. However, if we come back over to the core button here, there was some really nice things we had in Define Props. We had this re required, which we can get, but we also have this validator, and then we have default values as well. And I was trying to think and trying to ask, someone was asking me about this, is like, why would I ever use this TypeScript way of defining props when I when it kind of takes away a few of these things that you can get with define props using it as an object? It's also worth mentioning that if you do have more complicated objects, you can do something like this and do type object as prop type and then give it a specific type inside here. Let's say it's a, a text with type string. So if you have like more complicated objects, you can do something like this. But overall, I really dislike using this define props. I really like using the kind of what I feel is normal TypeScript like this. Now to get around a few of these things, a few things that's missing, let, let's talk about it. So let's take a look at how you would add in default values into here using this define props in this type of pattern. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. One is you use something called with defaults. And what you do is you just surround your whole define props with this with defaults, and then you can put values with it. I'm not a huge fan of this. Some people really like it, but in this case, I could put like text and put default value here. And this is kind of what it looks like. I, like I said, I don't really like the, adding this extra boilerplate. I think it's a lot. What I like better is inside my Nux config or in my Vite config, if I'm using a Vite app, you can actually turn on this experimental feature called props destructure. And I've done this in a few videos. In Nux's cases, you have to kind of drill down from this Vite, but I actually go to Vite, view script, props destructure. If you're in a, a Vite app, it's just view script, props destructure. Once you can turn this to true, you can do something like this. So first, since we're assuming we want a default value, this text would not be required. Just like every other TypeScript, I can make it optional by, by using the question mark. And then I can do const here, and then I can grab the text out of it, and then I can have it equal whatever I want. Let's say I want to have it equal high default value here. And then once I save it, let's go back into this index view, and I'm not gonna pass this hello in there any longer. You see, I don't have any errors in this VS code and it says high default. So now I've been able to destructure this out and add in a default value, which is, which is even better. Now, one thing that, so that covers pretty much our types, our requires are required, but what about the validator? So if you look at this example here and when I showed you earlier and you can do all sorts of validation on it, but all it did was essentially just showed a warning in the console there's no VS code plugin or anything to do it. So what you could do is you could just take this text here and then just check it. If text dot length is greater than three, or is, I guess it could be less than three, then you can just do console dot warn warning. So let's say we have the same example again, and I'm gonna go back into my index view and I'll put a text here and I'll just put in high. You can see here now I have this warning in the console that there's a problem I, and it still works. Obviously it's just a warning. You would have to, if you're a developer, you would have to be checking your console, but I think most developers are probably trying to make sure there's no warnings in their console before they go to production. I could be wrong in that. I was trying to think though, this is kind of sloppy. I don't really love doing this text at length, is there a better way of doing this? And that's where I really came across Zod. Zod is really built for form validation, any type of validations that you want. And it has really nice things like this string validation. I can mark a string, mark it as the maximum length, minimum lengths. I can have it check for email, URLs, UIDs. It starts with end with IP. So it has a whole bunch of really cool validations that I may actually want to use inside my app. And you can get this working with Vue. So let me show you an example of that. So I went to the Zod website, zod.dev, and I followed the inst installation tips. And all basically you do is do npm install Zod. 
and that will install it on your app. Uh, and then I went ahead and copy and pasted this in here just to save a little bit of time. But what you can do is now I have a props and I still do the define props. I make it optional. I guess I can make it required to. Now I can use that to check against a schema that I'm gonna create in Zod. In this case, I'm creating an object. In that object, I have a type text. It has to be a minimum of three characters long. And if it's not, it's gonna give this warning message and not long enough. And then I can use this prop schema.parse. I pass in that props.txt. I could have destructured it here too, but let's assume maybe that experimental feature is off. And then if there's an error, then I send the warning with the error message to the console. So let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna save it. If I come back over here, you can see I had that not long enough warning in the console. And the reason you may, this is quite a few more lines of code, but I could definitely see taking all the props validations that you want, extracting them into their own utility file, and then sharing them across multiple components in your app. I think this is a lot cleaner way of doing this validation than the way you did it inside this define props here. It's also a lot more powerful, has a lot more built-in tools to make it easier. So that's definitely what I think. I think this is a pretty powerful feature. I'm really happy with using Zod. I, what I'd also do if I was using this in production, anytime I had any forms, I would use Zod for the form validation there too. So I'd use it for props and I would use it for form validation. Now, if you are got this far in this video, you may be thinking like, why can't you take this prop schema, infer it, and then add it directly into this type here. So we have right here this define props. Can I just pass in this Zod type in here? Well, I tried it and I could not get it working. There is a view.ts which allows you to add in more complex TypeScript types into your define props. And no matter what I did, I couldn't get it working. If you got it working, leave a, a message below, a comment. Let me know how you got it working. That would be pretty neat. Uh, either way though, I think this this is fine because really this validator just gives warnings in the console and that's all we're doing here and it's, and it's really powerful. So let me know what you think. Leave a comment below. I appreciate it. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you so much. I have in my description below a place where you can sign up for my mailing list and I also do one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one coaching and mentoring, especially if you need help with Vue, React, Angular. I'll be your man. Thanks.